Marion Holland. Uh, she's the uh, cardiologist at uh, uh, the uh, Guam Regional Medical City. We've had her as a guest before and happy to have her now. Good morning, Doctor. Or, uh, it's afternoon, isn't it? Dr. Marion Holland, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Patty? I am fine. It's been a while since we've spoken. How everything going okay? How you how you loving Guam? Uh, Guam's been Guam's been good to us. Yeah, yeah. It 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 uh, it must be really nice to see that progress is being made. I mean, the first wave is going to start moving in. How cool is that? It's uh, it's very exciting, actually. We're we're hoping to get moved over in the next month. Yeah. So, what what's going to go into your unit? Um, well, me hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I, I'll, I'll be part of the cardiology department, and we'll be offering preventive cardiology care, cardiology mm -hmm. uh, general care, echocardiograms, stress tests. Uh, we'll have an interventionist come in the summer, and then I'll also be doing subspecialty electrophysiology, which is pacemakers and uh, uh, arrhythmia management. Okay. Uh, will it, uh, the, the addition of Dr. Noel Conception, are you familiar with him? I am. Yeah. Oh, uh, had you met him before in uh, in California, or he's just uh, just that all cardiologists know each other? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I've actually met him at, uh, when he came to visit uh, recently. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, great guy. Uh, look, are you looking forward to working uh, with him as well? Oh yeah. No, I think we'll make a great team. Oh, wonderful. And, and Dr. Aravind is uh, or Aravind Sekhar is, uh, is our interventionist who's coming in August. So it'll be. To cardiologists and Dr. Conception is the uh, CT surgeon. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, it's it's it, what, so so when all is said and done, and that whole unit is 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 going to be is running uh, smoothly. What kind of services will will be offered there that we're not getting anywhere here? Uh, so the our interventionalist uh, who will be coming in August, so he'll be able to do a acute heart attack therapy um, interventions, uh, angiogram stents, and I should say that Dr. Naba over at PCC currently does angiograms and he does, um, has been doing stents and he's been very successful. Um, so we'll add on to that, uh, the therapy that he offers. We're hoping to have an electrophysiology lab sometime by the fall and that will offer uh, um, electrophysiology studies to look at arrhythmias and uh, ablations to get rid of uh, potential arrhythmias that you can make little burns in the heart to get rid of permanently. And then also pacemakers, which are done by Dr. Kim here on the island already, but I plan to expand and be able to do defibrillators as well as biventricular wow. device therapy to help with heart failure management. Wow. How about that? Is it is it different uh, uh, and more exciting? I, I'm probably helping you answer the question, <laughs> uh, but, but it, it, what is the difference? Maybe that's a better way to say it. What is the difference between coming into a new facility and sort of you know dealing with a canvas that's got some artwork on it, and then going to a, or going to a facility uh, that's got the entire you know piece of art already uh, already painted? Um, it's it's difficult. <laughs> Yeah. It's, uh, it's been difficult for for us here. Yeah. Uh, we're not used to not having a lot of toys and even supplies. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I have to applaud everybody who's working at Guam Memorial Hospital for being able to do as much as they do with the limited supplies and um, subspecialties they have. I think they really, I, I, I would have a difficult time um, managing care in that facility, uh, not GMA specifically, but um, just... In a facility that didn't have all, ever, yeah, all the so bells they, and whistles, yeah. they do, I think, exceptional work over there. Uh, so when GRMC f comes together, will you then, do you think that you will have everything, I mean, everything that you have been needing and wanting uh, is either on order or it is here and there will be an adequate supply? That's, that is the, that's the plan and the hope. Um, so we'll uh, and, see and how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you hold out great hope that that is the plan that will stick. <laughs> <It's the plan. laughs> well, I mean, you, you, you're here. I mean, it's a big investment that you've already made to be here. Uh, you know, you and your, your husband, of course, is also a doctor there. And then, you know, the, uh, you've made an investment into the, your lifestyle on Guam. We have, and I think it really will make a difference to the people um, 
I, I, uh, I believe in what GRMC is bringing to the community. Yeah, you wouldn't have come all this way if you didn't. I get no. that. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it, the, here's the other thing. Um, uh, the, 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 the other thing is, um, God, I'm sorry, I'm a little bit distracted. When, when uh, you, uh, I had a question for you, and, it, and somebody texted me something, and there was, an an, there was a question they wanted to ask you, but I was going to wait uh, for that for a second. Oh, yeah, in your time, that, the, the time that you have spent in Guam, you've had an opportunity to see, you know, and, and, and learn the people, and you know our idiosyncrasies and the culture and, and our uh, habits for better or for worse. Uh, your take, being a cardiologist, is is you see that there is a definite need, and and uh, you are actually looking at patients who might be walking time bombs. Uh, certainly, there's a big problem here on Guam, and I think that disease tends to start earlier. I've seen many more 30 and 40 year olds uh, for heart disease than I care to, um, and there's been, I'm sure you know, a lot of sudden deaths recently in the news of Mm -hmm. very young people. Um, So uh, I think there is a lot that can be done here in Guam to help prevent that and hopefully provide care so that it doesn't progress. Yeah. Is it, it, do you think it is because we don't have that necessarily have anybody, um, uh, you know, in regular practice on Guam that we tend not to pay attention to those sorts of things until there is a symptom that pops up that we need to go and pay attention to it? Um, I would say there's probably multiple reasons why there's a big problem on Guam, just genetics, uh, just a high risk of heart disease, diabetes on the island, um, a lot of risk factors on the island, such as not exercising or eating the really uh, high-fat diets, um, can lead to more disease and more risk. And then the, the um, availability of people to go see when troubles arise or being able to go get therapy for heart disease or angiograms going and needing sometimes to have to go off island, um, I think that limits the care and that allows more progression of disease. Mm-hmm. Uh, than if you were living somewhere else. Uh, so are, are you saying then that all of these ailments, all of these risks, heart attacks, arrhythmias, strokes, and they are, are generally all preventable? They are um, indeed preventable, um, which uh, I guess you're leading into my uh, uh, the study I wanted to talk about. Sure. So with, uh, with a lot of patients I've seen, I, I, I often talk about the same advice and there's been a lot of um, recent studies in the news lately that really focus on preventive care and what you um, as patients can do to promote better health. Um, so it's a partnership between what I can provide as far as medications and direction and studies to look and assess for disease and treat it, but then as the patient so that we form a partnership in care of what the patient can do. And there's a recent study out in Sweden within the past year or so that actually looked at preventable, um, that looked at heart disease. They, they took a, 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 a group of patients uh, over a 10-year span and looked at their risk factors for heart disease and whether they, they, had, they followed certain um, modifiable things, lifestyle changes, and whether they had a heart attack. So these were people that didn't have heart disease. They looked at five risk factors, and at the end of the time period, they said, okay, well, who had heart attacks? They found that if people would follow certain lifestyle habits, that they could prevent 80% of heart attacks. So four out of five heart attacks could be prevented purely by following lifestyle modifications, not having anything to do with what the doctor can do, but solely what the patient can do. What's the other 20% just because you're just into it? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of genetics that play into heart disease, mm. so... Um, uh, you can't do a lot about some things, but if, I mean, 80% of these can be prevented. So there right. are a lot of things that can be done to prevent disease. And then the 20%, like you say, um, you just work on medications and I see. Um, and and uh, and pray, I guess. Um, <laughs> yeah, and pray that nothing happens to you. <laughs> but, but 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 the the. These lifestyle habits that are listed in the study is really nothing different than you have been preaching for, for a while. 
Sure, it's every it's something that everybody knows that they need to do, but this was one of the first big studies that looked and actually proved that it can make such a dramatic difference in eighty percent. Who would have thought that you could prevent eighty percent of heart attacks by just doing some lifestyle changes? Yeah. So I, I think it's a pretty profound study. Um, so just to review it for your listeners, the the five things that you can do are to eat a healthy diet, and I, I preference the Mediterranean diet because other studies have shown that if you follow a Mediterranean diet, you can reduce 30% of heart disease, strokes, and deaths. So that's, mm. that's a very healthy diet, eating lots of fish, minimizing red meat, eating lots of fruits, vegetables, minimizing, um, uh, uh, minimizing bad diet. Uh, bad foods like co- cookies, candies, all the things that you want to eat, mm-hmm. um, eating olive oil, nuts. Uh, so eating a healthy diet, not smoking. If you can stop smoking, you could probably extend your life up to 10 years. If you can do one thing it's to, in your life to prevent heart attack strokes, um, it's to stop smoking. Smoking is um, a big risk factor. What about alcohol? How much does that play into it? So it's interesting. Um, so the Mediterranean diet and this study actually both um, looked at alcohol use, and they actually found benefits of alcohol in moderation. So I think everything in moderation is important. Mm-hmm. Alcohol can cause cancers. It can cause heart failure. It can um, lead to liver disease. But in moderation, and that's typically defined as less than two drinks per day for a man or less than one drink per day for a woman. And in the Swedish study, they... they um, they stopped at one drink uh, per day. Um, so in moderation, alcohol has shown benefits. If you aren't a drinker, I wouldn't recommend starting, and there's never, never, there never was and never will be a study looking to see if a non-drinker starts <laughs> to drink if that's going to prevent disease because it just doesn't make sense because right. alcohol does cause a lot of disease. But in moderation, if you do drink, as long as you don't overindulge, um, it can be beneficial um, so alcohol can can be good. Yeah, but w- but we're also talking about an area of the world in the Mediterranean region uh, that is known for uh, you know its fine wines as much as they might be known for you know the the great diet the all the olive oils and the fish and and all that stuff. Uh, they're also known for you know for d- to be drinkers on a daily basis. Yes, yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. A lot of wine goes through those lips over there. Uh, yeah. and, and in Greece, a lot of alcohol goes through those great lips. I, I, there, there, there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, in just probably even the relaxation factor of, um, mm. of alcohol, I'm sure, it contributes as well to that Mediterranean lifestyle. Yeah, okay. Uh, and and, and what, about, what, about, what about then stress? Uh, so this study didn't necessarily... Like, look at stress, but uh, stress is definitely a, a bad for your health. Depression has shown in multiple sh- studies to be bad for your health, which brings up another thing that you can do to prevent heart disease, and that's be physically active. So if you exercise, that tends to reduce depression and anxiety and is, has multiple health benefits um, to the heart as well as other um, medical problems. Mm-hmm. Um, and the last, uh, the last one, so eating healthy, not smoking, being physically active, a little bit of alcohol. The last uh, risk factor that's modifiable is to limit abdominal fat. So um, uh, being o- obese is shown in multiple studies to not be good for your health, and actually decreasing your weight even by 5%, 10% has shown uh, significant benefits in hypertension, diabetes, metabolic parameters. Um, so decreasing any amount is, is good for your health. Mm-hmm. I often talk to patients about having a body like Santa Claus or Kim Kardashian because when you think about people who gain weight, people who gain weight like Kim Kardashian where they have it all in their butt actually have lower risk for heart disease and that's because the people who gain weight like Santa Claus tend to collect fat in their abdominal organs and also on top of their heart, which leads to risk factors for heart disease. Yeah, uh, so there's, there's good ways to be overweight and bad ways to be overweight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I hate to say it that, but what, can, can I ask you, why was this study concentrated only on men? Uh, it's a it's a problem in all studies. Unfortunately, they tend to concentrate on men more than women, and then we extrapolate to women. It, so that was just the focus. That was of just the, the way. Study. That's the way it goes. But you, but you, a lot of your specialty is on, oh, isn't it, on female cardiac care? Not specifically. 
specifically. Mm. I mean, I, I uh, women are near and dear since I'm a, a woman, uh, but I'm not particular to women. I, I like men, too. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, in in um, the, the study, you know, we don't have a lot of Mediterranean restaurants on Guam, unfortunately, so people are going to have to, uh, you know, have to work out these diets all by themselves. A lot of the elements you can find, I mean, a lot of these things that you can find on Guam, uh, is, is, is does that lend at all to you know the the environment of a place or a person's environment? Their ability uh, to get these kinds of foods must make a huge difference in in uh, whether or not these risks increase or decrease. Yeah, it's definitely a problem, especially when McDonald's is cheaper to get fresh fruits yeah. or fresh vegetables. Right, um, but you can. It's possible to get frozen fruits and vegetables, and the frozen is just as good as as fresh, um, I'm, uh, as uh, fresh uh, foods. Yeah. So there's ways that you can get what you need, but it definitely has been hard on Guam, and I, I'm surprised at how hard it is to get fresh things. But um, there is the farmers market, and there's definitely places. Um, I just heard about this place called Heavenly Vegetables for yeah. with, via that. Heavenly FDA. Veggies, yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, you know I I think that there are ways to get it, um, but it is hard because McDonald's is easy; it's drive through and, yeah. and it tastes delicious. So. Yeah, <laughs> but now, now, has it been? I mean, for you personally, you and your husband personally, uh, you know, has your lifestyle changed much because of uh, the inability or inconvenience of of getting things that you might be used to go uh, getting uh, just by one walk through a supermarket in your neighborhood? It, it is harder you know we came from san diego so there's an mm. abundance of um fruits and vegetables um but we we try to focus best we can i mean no one's perfect and like i said everything's in moderation so um you know we we do the best we can yeah okay yeah i <laughs> everybody does the best they can yeah everybody does the best they can well is it you are still uh where now where where can people find you now so we're still in the the Harmon Loop Clinic, which is uh, uh, the old Social Security office, I'm told. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll be here presumably for the next month. And hopefully we'll be moving over to the hospital and be ready to see people there within the next month. Okay, um, but, you're, but right now people can make appointments to see you and you have a, a, an established patient list? Um, yes, and I know you're going to ask me for the phone number here, and that's, I don't have it. That's okay. That's okay. I'll, I'll ask Kevin. For, Kevin will text me any second and tell me what that number is. Uh, but but so people can they can make appointments. Do they have to be referred to you? I um I I don't exactly know the answer to that. Okay. I think usually the primary care uh, physicians refer. Yeah. Um, but I believe you can. Self-refer on. All right, just so, sort of walk in and 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 and. and are you still doing uh, your the walks with the doc? Are you doing that still? We we are. Um, uh, so every Thursday at eleven o'clock at the uh, Micronesia Mall in front of that um, funny toy thing mm -hmm. that my kids love. Yeah. Um, <laughs> next month it's Nurses Month, and so the nurses are actually going to be taking over um, in the month of uh, in the month of May to be. Uh, doing the walk, and I would actually also like to promote uh, Dr. Dr. Shea. I guess started a walk with a doc program too, which mm -hmm. I think is awesome. And um, I'm I was talking to some of the participants in my group about joining his group as well because I think it's uh, power in numbers, and I think it's important that we all promote health. So I I thought that was really great. Oh, that's good. Uh, there's nothing uh, greater than taking a you know a stolen item and 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 and, and putting your efforts together. I like that. No, that's not what I said. <laughs> I know I know that's not what you said. I know that's not what you said. It's a no. It was a great idea, and 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 I think that when uh, Dr. Shea started doing his as well, uh, that just opened up you know another way for people to ask questions. Uh, in a less intimidating, you know, setting. Yes. So, yeah, I, I don't mean to, I don't mean to cause any. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I am, Marion. You know how I am. <laughs> Give me in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By the way, your phone number. Your phone number is six four five 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 zero zero. 
next time we could do this uh, discussion over a glass of wine. Or oh, uh, one, one, I guess I can only have one half of a glass of wine. <laughs> I'll give you the other half. Uh, we'll dine on grape nuts, I think. Uh, grape leaves uh, grape leaves, and, and olives. But anyway, uh, uh, Marion, it's nice to have talked to you. Everything is good. I'm glad to see that uh, you're, I'm just glad to see that you've uh, adjusted to everything. I, how about the weather? You, you loving the weather? Yeah, I know the weather has been great. Yeah. We, uh, my kids and I, all, we all love it. Yeah, I'm glad you do. I hope I run into you one of these days, but uh, but with a glass of wine is definitely in order. Yes, definitely. All right. Thank you, Patty. I really appreciate it. You're absolutely welcome. I'll give, uh, I'll give Kevin my cell number. Just call me when you when you got a minute. Okay. All right. Have a good day. Thank you. Dr. Marion Holland. She's like one of the kindest ladies, and I keep putting words into her mouth when, uh, when she doesn't do that. I, she knows me, and so she knows that's the way it is.